Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. Welcome to the Clay County Fairgrounds. We're glad to have you here on this little ride with us. That's Clay County Fair Board member Dean Saunders inviting everyone to what's known as the world's biggest county fair held in Spencer, Iowa each September. But while Dean loves the fair and riding around the fairgrounds, he's truly passionate about that Persian orange tractor he's driving. That's my pride and joy, a WD-45 that I restored when I retired about uh, eight years ago. I grew up on Alice Jalmer's tractors. I have a brother that's uh, four years younger than I am, and, and we would many times uh, plow all night. Uh, uh, he'd run it for a while, and then I'd run it for a while. My dad always said, well, when you come home, go out and plow. Yeah, Dean and AC tractors go way back. He also has a long history with the three bottom slap plow he still keeps on the back of his WD-45. Now Dean, what was it that happened with you and this plow back in August 1952? Well, it's 50 years ago uh, this month. Uh, I was in a 4-H plowing contest in Shelby County, Iowa. And that was one where they came in and messed up your carburetor and then they gave you, they put an extra tank on, gave you a gallon of gas and put a gallon of gas in there and you had to set the plow, set the carburetor, or do whatever they had done to foul up your tractor. And, and, and I was fortunate enough to win that plowing contest. Growing up on AC tractors, Dean spent later years working for New Idea, White, and Agco. So when it comes to farm equipment, this is a guy who knows his stuff. And there are plenty of features that set this tractor ahead of the pack back in the mid-1950s. It was probably a little a little less expensive. Uh, uh, it probably ran maybe ran a little bit cheaper. Uh, had some features that the other uh, that the other tractors didn't have. Uh, for instance, the live hydraulics and that came about with the hand clutch. This hand clutch on this WD-45 is is uh, a wet clutch that stops the forward motion of the tractor. And what that actually does is gives you a live power takeoff. It was one of the first tractors that had a live power takeoff. By, by just releasing the hand clutch, you stop the forward motion and the power continued on through the power train, through the, uh, through the power takeoff and, and kept the implement running. The traction booster, the weight transfer system, uh, when the, plow, when, when the implement got to pulling harder, why it, it transferred weight to the tractor. That was an innovation at that time. And of course, uh, uh, speaking of Alice Chalmers, the big thing with the WD was it now had foot brakes, where the old WCs had hand brakes. Another innovation was the power-adjusted rear wheels. A farmer could loosen a few lock nuts, put the tractor in gear, and then easily spin the wheels in or out. Then it would spin that wheel right out on these on these uh, uh, rails. And you must remember that that most of the tractors at that time had fluid in the tires, so they were heavy, and it it was a real a real advantage to be able to spin those wheels in and out with those power adjust wheels. And that sold a lot of tractors for Alice Chalmers back in the 50s late 40s and, and early 50s. The four-cylinder engine, along with the traction booster, made the WD-45 just powerful enough to pull three plows. Also making the farmers work a little easier, the snap coupler hitch. It was a nice hitch and it was easy to operate. Uh, you could back into it and, and it would snap into place to release it. Why you had a lever on the on the platform of the tractor, you just pulled that lever and that unsnapped it and you unhooked these lift arms and just drove away from it. A winner in its day, the WD-45 is now retired from field work, but wherever it goes, the tractor, the plow, and Dean's fine restoration work always catch admiring glances. You really feel good, but as somebody told me, uh, uh, there's nothing as humbling as think you've done a great job restoring your tractor and then take it to a tractor show. And, and you find out what you could have done. Of course, the world's full of should'ves and could'ves. 
Once a prize-winning 4-H plowman, now a prize-worthy AC collector, Dean Saunders gives would-be classic tractor restorers this sage advice. Uh, number one, it's going to take about three times as long as you thought it was going to take. And number two, it's going to cost about three times what you thought it was going to cost. And number three, and probably the most important, you never, ever, ever tell the wife how much you spend on that darn thing.